Welcome back. Today I'm going to be making mandel bread. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start measuring everything out and putting it together. So um, I am going to do a single batch today. A lot of times I do a double batch, but today I'm doing a single batch. So the first ingredient is three cups of flour. And when measuring out flour, you always want to level it off. One, two, three. Okay, so that's it for the flour. Just inside. There goes my oven. I'm preheating my oven to 350. So I got three cups of flour over here. And um, I'm going to just do the dry ingredients. So three cups of flour, one cup of sugar. Now the sugar is going to end up getting mixed with the oil. So I'm going to put this in a different bowl. So the sugar is getting put into a different bowl than the flour. I'm just doing an order of how the ingredients were listed on this original recipe. So when measuring sugar, also you level it off. So one cup of sugar and one cup of oil. Now on the oil, the oil is going to get mixed with the sugar. So I'm going to put the oil directly in with the sugar. I set aside my flour for the time being. Okay, so. You need a liquid measure when measuring oil. Now, you could use corn oil, canola oil, I think even olive oil might work, but olive oil tends to have a flavor to it. So I'm using sunflower oil, because that's what I like to use. And when measuring oil, you have to go ahead, I'm gonna have to move the camera at an angle to show you how I measure oil the proper way. Measure oil, since it is a liquid ingredient, Move this back there. So the line, it's got to go to the, it needs to be one cup. So it's going to go to the one cup line. And I need to get, since it's liquid, I need to get level with the one cup. And then I pour it in. And I'm going to look at it right across to the one cup line. Let's level across. And then in order to get the oil out of this measuring cup and into where the sugar is, you need, if you, hopefully you have one, if not, you just maybe have to use a metal knife or something, a uh, butter knife. You need to get all the oil off of the measuring cup. And I like to use a rubber spatula. It works very well to scrape the all off. So this will get mixed in the mixer. So I'm going to set this aside because that's the first thing that's going to get mixed in the mixer. Then the next thing we have to do is three eggs. Okay, it's got three eggs. One, two, three. And if you get any eggshell in there, take your other, fish it out with the eggshell that you have in your hand or any other thing that does not look appealing that might have gotten stuck with your egg. Whoops, almost got that. Okay, these are organic eggs. Okay, so what I like to do with all my extracts is always put them in with the eggs. So this particular recipe calls for a teaspoon of vanilla Teaspoon of vanilla and a half a teaspoon of lemon extract. This is where all the flavor comes into play. Half a teaspoon of lemon extract and a half a teaspoon of almond extract. Okay. 
We got all our extracts in. Let's set that aside. We got our oil. I'm setting that aside. Flour, setting that aside. That's that's done. And then I'm gonna take a fork and I'm gonna blend this up a little with the fork. Scramble it a little bit. Set that aside. So I'm gonna go through the ingredients. Okay, so I have so far, I got the three cups of flour. I set that aside. I got the three eggs. I got the one cup of oil in with the sugar. And I have my flour, a dash of a little bit of salt. So that's gonna go in. A little bit of salt is gonna go in with the flour. Okay, so it says a quarter cup, I mean a quarter cup, a quarter teaspoon, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and I'm just going to put a little bit less than that, just because I don't like things with too much salt, but I need just a little, whoops, see, I got too much, that's why I didn't want to measure it over the top. So I'm just going to get rid of a little bit of that salt. Okay, my, so then I'm going to put that in with the flour, and what else? Baking powder. One teaspoon of baking powder. Now, make sure that it's actually baking powder and not baking soda because it will make a difference. You always have to be very careful with that. Now in measuring the baking powder, okay, so one teaspoon. Okay, my teaspoon, okay, here's my teaspoon. You wanna measure like this and then you level it off. You can use your lid to level it off and then put it in with the dry ingredients. Okay, so then I'm going to take a fork and I'm going to mix it all up like this. And now I like to, because I really like cinnamon a lot, I'm going to add to some cinnamon, even though it doesn't, the recipe doesn't call for it, because the recipe does call for cinnamon and sugar to go on top of the mondo bread, but I like so much cinnamon, I'm just going to put in some extra cinnamon in with the dry ingredients because I love cinnamon my family loves cinnamon so even though the recipe didn't call for it I'm going to modify the recipe which I tend to do a lot okay so to review the ingredients we have three cups of flour three eggs one cup of oil one cup of sugar quarter a teaspoon of salt, I put in a little slightly less, a teaspoon of baking powder, and then I have a teaspoon of vanilla, a half a teaspoon of almond extract, a half a teaspoon of lemon extract, I put some extra cinnamon in here, and then I do, I did measure out one cup of chocolate chips. So we're going to go over to the mixer and start mixing this up and I'll show you what the consistency is supposed to look like. Okay. There, now you can see me. Okay, so now we're going to start mixing everything up, and I just want to let everybody know which type of um, attachment. So you definitely want to use your dough hook for this. Okay, so you do not want to use this one. This one is like for egg whites, the wisp. You do not want to use that. You don't want to use one that's like for cake and or other things like that. You definitely want to be using your dough hook. So if you have a dough hook, if you don't have a dough hook, just don't use the wisp, use the other one. Okay. Because this is going to be a pretty firm dough when it's all done. So I'm going to adjust the camera so you can see. Okay. So this, this is the oil and the sugar going this is the first part that's going to get mixed together. I'm checking to see if anything's sticking. 
a little bit sticking, so I am taking my rubber spatula and making it not stick, and then I'm going to mix this a little bit longer, just a little bit longer. So now I'm going to add my eggs, which has all the extracts in there. Mix this up. Okay, in the meantime, I wash my hands, get the egg off of there. So that looks pretty good. It's well mixed and it's not anything I need to really check on because it's all kind of liquidy. So now, last step is I'm going to add the last step for the mixing part. Is it? Oh, actually I need to do the chocolate chips too, but I'm going to start in by adding some flour just a little bit at a time. Scrape the sides, I'm pushing this down. You almost have to do it in almost every single recipe, it seems like. Okay, so I push that down and I'm going to continue to mix so until it's a nice dough consistency. I just hit that with my hand. Okay. looks good. Nothing seems to be sticking. So now I have to be careful. I want to add my chocolate chips. So I'm going to add the chocolate chips. But I'm going to put it on a very slow setting. And I'm, I'm going to put it on the stir setting. So it's going to be very, I don't want to break up the chocolate chips, but I want to get them well blended. And it's such a a thick dough that it would be hard to do it by hand. So I'm just going to put it on stir. I'm just going to stir it up slowly. And you got to be patient. Put it on. It's fine. But I'm just kind of peeking in right now to make sure that I got it blended. I'm just going to increase it just a tiny bit. I'm going to take a look at it and see if it looks stirred well or not. So this is chocolate chip mondo bread. And you might think, wow, that really didn't take a long time to go ahead and to do that. It's a pretty simple recipe. So a chocolate chip mondo bread is all in the technique. So I will show you how to put it onto the cookie sheet the proper way and get it ready for the oven. Let me go rinse my hands off and move some things around. Okay, now for the fun part. So what you have to do is, you can't be afraid to get your hands dirty. That's the first thing. So 
you go ahead and you go in here and you grab a glob of this dough and it's very very sticky and you lay it like this and I if you've watched some of my other videos you see that I wear gloves a lot I've never worn gloves doing this, so I'm not even going to try because I don't know if it would even work properly. I did bring some, usually I go right over to the sink, but I just got some water in a bowl. And you need the water and to get it on your hands. And you need to start forming it into a small loaf. I'm trying to make sure everybody can see this. Now I took a cooking class when I was sometime before middle school. I don't actually know that my exact age. And this is where when I got this recipe. When I came home and tried this out at home, my mom was, <laughs> why are you playing with the food? I said, this is how you make mango bread. This is how the t instructor showed us how to do it. But she thought I was just making a big mess in the kitchen with this mandel bread. She loves mandel bread. Okay. But when she first saw it being made, she thought I was just making, you know, a little kid making their hands a mess. So, you gotta use the water. You gotta make it form around like this. And I'm gonna need another tray. So I use my old cookie sheets to do this. So I'm going to, at this point I have to grab another cookie sheet so I have to run over to the sink and actually rinse my hands well. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside for just a sec and I'm gonna grab my other cookie sheet. Over here, put this aside. I still have to do something to that. So I'm not ready to get rid of that completely. And then I'm just gonna grab out the rest of the dough it's hard to it's very very sticky so if you make this and you're like oh what is going on here it's so sticky that's correct it is so sticky and I'm taking the rubber spatula and I'm just scraping scraping the bowl getting all the batter off. And then I'm gonna get my hands wet. I kinda like having this bowl method. It makes it less trips to the sink. This one's gonna be priced a little bit skinnier. Okay, so now I got my loaves. And I could have done it 50-50, I could have I didn't know if I was going to fit it all. I So often I do double batches of everything. So I, a single batch to me is like, uh, I, I don't even know if I need two trays or what I need. So I'm going to rinse my hands again because I need to put some cinnamon and sugar on here. And I want to show you. Okay, so what I do, because I use a lot of cinnamon and sugar for different things. Um, I got a thing of cinnamon like that size and then was halfway down. Then I added sugar to it and now I use this strictly for cinnamon and sugar I I measure I mean I uh, wrote you know cinnamon and sugar on here because it has a nice top so you have to then the next step is to sprinkle kind of a generous amount of the cinnamon and sugar on here in the meantime my oven is baking at 350 Okay, so that looks good for the cinnamon and sugar, and then I'm going to do, go to this side and do this one. So I'm going to put this in the oven for about 25 minutes, and then we will check it, and then there's more to the process, and uh, so I will put this in the oven. We'll check it when it's almost ready and then uh, we'll see how that looks. Okay, it's been like 12 minutes, so it's about halfway there. And let's just take a peek at what it's looking like. So look how big it's gotten. 
it's like really gotten large compared to what it was but it's only been 12 minutes my timer went off just to go ahead and remind me hey check this out and look at it and we will go ahead and check back in just a few okay, so now it's time to pull this from the oven Okay, so now this has to cool down. I'm gonna actually adjust the camera so you can see a little bit better. These are old cookie sheets, so it's gonna not look as pretty, but okay. So those have to those have to cool those have to cool down. And once they cool down, I'm gonna cut them and I'll show you as I'm cutting them. And then we're gonna toast each side. Okay, now for the next step. So I'm gonna adjust the camera down so that you can see what I'm doing here. So the reason I use the old cookie sheets is because I have to cut on here. Now there's a little piece here that when I, I dripped, I'm gonna just remove these little pieces so they don't burn. Because this is gonna go back in the oven on 350 after I'm done doing this. So, I have a knife like this that's curved. Any long knife will do. I just found through the years that this one kind of works the best. So I'm gonna cut all the way through. And I'm just gonna pull this out. And you'll see when I move it how thick this is. So I'm using the old cookie sheet because I don't wanna take a new cookie sheet and have cut marks on it. That is the reason. I guess you could buy a cookie sheet just for the purpose of doing this particular dessert, which I had thought about doing, but I had some old cookie sheets that I was okay with doing this, so. Okay, so I'll cut the other one in just a sec. So I have a really good spatula where I can really get under it. I'm just loosening it at this time. And then I'm going to put this up on its side. And notice the, the bottom is done, but it's not burnt, but it's done. And I'm going to just scoot things over. And it's, you can tell that it's very moist on the inside, but it's going back in the oven, so that's okay. Just have to be very careful so it doesn't fall apart. Handle with care. <laughs> okay. And then this one, the end piece, you almost have to put it up against the side so that it stays on its side. Okay, so I got this, and then I take my cinnamon and sugar, and I sprinkle it with cinnamon and sugar. Hope everybody's having a good day. I know I am because I am making my house smell wonderful and I'm having fun in the kitchen. Okay, so I'm going to pop these in the oven for about five minutes and we're going to check. I'm going to show you what it looks like. And then after we're done with that, then we're going to flip them and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to pop the, I'm going to get the other ones uh, going on this tray. I'm going to pop them in the oven all at the same time and then we will check back in just a few minutes. Okay, so the timer went off, so let's take a look-see and see if it's ready. I'm going to peek in there. If it's not ready, I will show you. If it is ready, I'll, I'll bring it out of the oven and show you. So I'm just going to take a look here. Not quite yet. 
So let me, I'm just gonna open this up. I'm gonna move the camera over here so you can see. So when you are cooking this particular thing, you'll know what I'm looking at. So what I'm wanting it to look like is toast. Um, and so it's not quite there yet. It's very, very close, but not quite. So I'm going to set a timer for probably another two or three minutes. It's getting close. Um, and then we will look at it again. Okay, time to take the mandel bread out of the oven. And I'm sure that it's done now on this side. Okay, so now, much like the first time I did it, I have to let it cool down a little. It's very hot. So I'm going to let it cool down a little, and then we will flip it over and then cinnamon and sugar the other side. So um, I'll be right back with you as soon as this cools down enough to handle. Now all these pieces of mandel bread have two sides except for the end pieces. The end pieces are actually done. So those are done. I'm going to put those on the cooling rack. Because they don't, you know, they have that for the other side. Okay, so now I'm going to very carefully Hopefully, I might have to actually use the metal spatula to kind of loosen things up a little. So I'm going to very carefully turn these over. So I prefer not for them to break in pieces. <laughs> the goal is to not have it turn into just crumble like that piece. Sometimes it happens, it's okay. It's part of the, the situation with mango bread. Sometimes it falls apart a little. Okay. So now I'm going to sprinkle this with cinnamon and sugar. do another five or six minutes um, the one side it ended up taking longer than it anticipated it didn't seem like it was making progress as quick as I thought it would so I left it in a little bit longer so I'm gonna sprinkle these with cinnamon and sugar but now that the oven is so hot and those pans are so hot I'm thinking five minutes might be just fine I will have to check so I'm going to have these go back in the oven and then we'll check. Okay, so back. I pulled them out of the oven and I just want to show you kind of how they look. So that's one side. It's very, very hot. That's the other side. And I'm going to put these on a cooling rack. I'm going to let them cool down a little and then I will taste one. See you soon. Time to taste test the mandel bread. I want to show you what it looks like. So what it looks like. Chocolate chip mandel bread. I like to have it with a cup of coffee. That's my favorite way to have it. Maybe some people want to have it with milk. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to break it open. Of course, it's still really warm because that's how I like to eat my sweets. And that's what it looks like on the inside. And I will taste it. Mmm. Very, very good. I miss that taste. Last year I had some, and uh, it's been a long year because this tastes really, really good. Mm. You can taste all the, the vanilla extract and the almond extract and the lemon extract. There's a lot of, lots and lots of flavor going on. And follow it with some coffee or milk. Mmm, delicious. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for those of you that are subscribing to my channel. If you're not subscribing, please subscribe and like this video and have an awesome day. Thank you.